Uh, first up, though, we're going to be talking live in the studio to George Galloway, the Respect Candidate for London Mayor, who joins me. Good morning, George. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, so, first question, I've asked all of the candidates we've spoken to. Of course, if you just tuned in, we have spoken to all of the leading candidates for London Mayor. Um, why are you standing? Well, I think London needs a leader, not a reader, not a desiccated calculating machine. And as the Financial Times editorial, no less, at the weekend said, the leading two candidates are Lilliputian. Now, um, Zach Goldsmith is extremely tall, and uh, Sadiq Khan isn't. But I think that Lilliputian is a good uh, description, and the FT uh, got their comment right. And so I think uh, as a big world city, uh, London needs a, a big figure, a bigger figure than the front two, uh, to lead it. And I've got a raft of policies which would radically change London. And I emphasize the word radically. It's not a word that uh, should be hidden from because London is basically a tale of two cities. It's the 1% dripping in gold and it's the rest struggling to get by. And the 1% can look after themselves. The rest need a mayor on their side and I would be on their side. You're, however, a fully paid up member of the 1%, aren't you? So why would you be the best person to represent the ordinary folk? You weren't because 250 of, grand a couple, last year, didn't you? Oh, very much more than that, Oh, I do apologise. Very much more than <laughs> Sorry, that. Sorry, you'll probably uh, sue me for that. Mr, uh, Mr. Ben was uh, a very rich man, but he was on the side of the people who weren't. And I'm on the side of the people who weren't, too. OK, tell me, what are you going to do? Your first day as London Mayor. Tell me the top three things you're going to do. I'm going to send my emissary over to the square mile just across the river and tell them that the party is over. The bankers, the city slickers, the Sir Philip Greens or Lady Green, as we now discover, have made off with hundreds of millions of pounds whilst leaving the workers of BHS. What are you actually going to do? I'm going to send my emissary over there and tell them that things are going to have to change. You or, don't have, you don't have or, any powers. You're or, London Mayor, not the chance. No, but I do have a pulpit. And I'm quite good at uh, speaking in the pulpit. But are and, you good at getting uh, things I'm, to change? What are you going to I'm, do, I I'm asked going, you? I'm going to begin a campaign to mobilise London to clean up the city of London. Most people agree with that. After all, our country was brought to its knees by these people, and we've suffered eight years of what they call austerity, which means poverty and pressure for most people. But wait a second, we've as had eight, a, we've had eight direct, years, we've had eight years of result. that, and we've had people calling for that. We've had Occupy movements. We've had we haven't had a mayor had, calling. We haven't for had a mayor it. calling. But you think that you've got the power as London mayor because of the the, the position that has uh, that I, that will that will make yeah, that happen. I, I, I have a lot of power to influence the. Uh, atmosphere in London about this right. square mile, which is exceptionally uh, described as a tax haven inside our own capital it city. It also, of course, brings in an awful lot of money to London, does it not? What else are you going to do? Because a lot of people would say, look, look we, you know, we want to keep the city thriving in London because an awful lot of people are employed by it. Not just the fat cats, you know, the, the, the people who work at the lower levels uh, on average incomes, the cleaners, everybody else. Well, they call that trickle down, that if these fat cats get enough money, then some of it will trickle down. But it turns out from the Panama Papers that it doesn't trickle down. It gets stashed away. It gets stashed no, away People still have in jobs in the Panama city who aren't on six-figure salaries. Uh, I know it, plenty of them. And it gets, uh, I'm sure you do. Uh, it on, gets, on normal uh, average it, salaries, it gets, yes. Uh, it gets stashed in the Bahamas and in Panama, and it's just not good enough. That's not the London we want. It's not the is, Britain that we want. Is there anything want. else you're going to do as London yeah, Mayor? You or did you ask just, me for you, three. Yes, yeah, so so I'm thinking, I'm thinking me, that was reasonable. Let me, yes. let me you're develop. still talking about the first one. No, that's because you kept interrupting me. The second one, I'm going to ask to see the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police and tell him that the London Police Force needs to start looking like London. It's the 23rd anniversary of the foul murder of Stephen Lawrence and the police collaboration with his killers that allowed uh, most of them to evade justice entirely and some for a very long time. 
And after that murder, McPherson opined that the Metropolitan Police was institutionally racist. So you, you want to have more black and Asian police officers? Uh, I sure do. And London well, are, you, are we not already trying that? My, my understanding is there are non-stop campaigns to try and bring in more ethnic minority police officers. The number of minority police officers has gone down not up. But, no, I, I, but gone, there are plenty of campaigns to try and encourage well, that. You need to ask why the numbers have gone down. And the numbers have gone down because the police tend to act in certain communities as an occupation force. And they, they react to minority officers in their ranks with the famous, infamous canteen culture, mm -hmm. which uh, drives them out. So the London police force will have to look like London and it will have to be led by people who look like London and it'll have to stop discriminating well, on other it'll grounds It'll have to be too. led by, do you mean we have to have a black or Asian metropolitan police chief? That Is that what you meant? very good idea. No, but are you going to impose, that for instance, be, any quotas for that people? Would be, that would be a, a, an exceedingly good idea. Quotas? You want uh, to have quotas for a, the colour of officers? No, no, I'm saying the leadership of the force by a black or minority officer would be an exceedingly good idea. But I have an important point, if I may. Mm. Uh, people are discriminated against by the police in this city, not just on the color of their skin, but the color of their shirt collar. If you pick someone's pocket in Liverpool Street Station, you'll very quickly be behind bars. But if you pick the bank's pocket of 10, 20, mm. 30 million pounds, you've almost no chance of going to jail. I think, I think many people listening would agree with you on that. What's your third policy? My third policy is on housing. We need millions of council houses. Council housing is the best form of rented tenure. We have two million people in the private rented sector, most of them, by the way, representing a huge subsidy from the taxpayer to private landlords through the housing benefit uh, scheme. Those two million private renters change house on average every three years. Their children have to change schools, change friends, and all the rest of it. It's a ticking time bomb. And most of them are uh, in houses that are being rented to them so we look, we, for no uh, other reason than we, money. We so, discussed housing with every candidate who's come mm. in and everyone says they've all got very specific ideas but how, you, how many new houses are you going to build and how are you going to fund council well, housing? I, I'm going to demand that councils be allowed to borrow to build council houses because it's costly to build but it's more costly not to mm -hmm. because the uh, social cleansing that's going on in London where working class people are having to move out uh, f uh, and displaced by luxury development, by private developers, the kind of people who are paying for the election campaigns of my two rivals, uh, simply has to stop. If we look along the river here at the uh, Battersea Power Station development, only 8% of those houses are defined as affordable, and affordable is defined as 80% of the average rents. That's not affordable at all. You have to be rich to afford the affordable house, never mind the others. So any developer will have to provide 50% of the units as affordable, and that will be defined as 50%, not 80, of the of the uh, the average rents in the area. And there's 600,000 houses in London that are empty because they weren't bought as homes at all. They were bought as safety deposit boxes. And they're left empty. And they're um, left empty. Can I ask you, uh, we've got a lot to get through in the next uh, uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, you claim on your website that you want to be the people's mayor if yeah. you're elected. But... Um, not many people in London seem to agree with you. You seem to be on roughly 0% in the polls. I don't know how you can be on 0% in the polls. Well, that you would know perfectly that, well that, how that you that can would, be on 0 That would mean your own wife wasn't It means that uh, if you round up or down... You know, it doesn't. It means if you round up or down on the polls that, that you're closer to 0% than 1%. So why don't people no, in London agree uh, with you? Uh, well, we, if you, you if don't you know, know, if you represent you have the no idea people. what the result of the election will be, thankfully, well, and neither do I. These polls are propaganda, not polling. My name isn't even put to the respondent in the polls. And I have dozens of examples, uh, uh, affidavits to prove it. So if you put an opinion poll to people and you don't even mention the name 
of one of the candidates, then of course you're not going to get much of a response. So I've this, been is a, this is a conspiracy against you? Well, it is. I've been systematically uh, blanked out, as you know, from all of the hustings, 98% to be precise. Is that when they just had the, the top five hustings. candidates? Uh, they've had the top five. But, then, but, you, but you're not in the top five. It. Well, according to every bookmaker, everyone on every day of the campaign, I'm the third favourite. I'm the best known candidate and I'm the third favourite of the bookies who have to put their money where their mouth is. So to be blanked out of television and radio and uh, other so-called NGO hustings is a pretty big uh, disadvantage. So as you can tell from my voice, I've had to take to the top of an open-top bus and take my message directly to people. OK, well, at the time is just coming up to 7.45. We have to get uh, an update on the travel. I must just say, um, police collaborating with the Lawrence, uh, Stephen Lawrence killers is, is George Galloway's view, not the view of talk radio. I must stress that's something he mentioned earlier. Coming up, though, on talk radio, we'll be talking more with George Galloway, find out a little bit more about what he plans to do and why he thinks he'll make a good mayor. This is Talk Radio. The time is 10.45. Across the UK, online and on DAB. A new kind of talk radio. We'll get you talking. You're Philip of Grout Expectations Tiling. Yeah? Winston Wolf. I'm told your business is expanding its territory. People are taking notice and you need looking after. So speak to Direct Line for your public liability insurance. They won't charge you admin fees for hitting the big time. And you better do it and do it quick, because big things are coming. What things? Contracts, Philip. Contracts. No administration fees when you increase your cover with Direct Line for Business. Can your business insurance do that? So it's Direct Line Public Liability Insurance. Underwritten by UK Insurance Limited. 44,000 UK men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in the next 12 months. Prostate Cancer UK has one ambition. To help stop men dying from prostate cancer. With your help, we can make prostate cancer a disease the next generation of men needn't fear. Search Men United and join the fight now. Trade Point, we've got a great range of decking, paving, and fencing for your landscaping job. Stocked in store, always at low trade prices. Plus, with our range of external panes, we've got everything you need to finish the job. So, why go anywhere else? Trade Point, trade brands, trade prices, trade only. Trade Point. Talk radio, traffic, and travel. In Lancashire, one lane is closed on the M6 North between 31 at Salisbury and 31A at Longbridge for emergency repairs. We're hearing the M1 Northbound is blocked because of a jackknife caravan between Junction 29 and 29A near Chesterfield. Breakdown on the M1 earlier has left southbound queues from 18 at Rugby down towards 16 at Daventry. Also breakdown blocking one lane northbound just north of Junction 14 at Milton Keynes. And all routes around Wrexham Town Centre are gridlocked because of several sets of roadworks. I'm Jamie Serkham. There's a brand new mouth in the morning. The Paul Ross Full Set Breakfast. Tomorrow morning from 6 on Talk Radio. The biggest breaking news stories, headline grabbing guests, and outspoken opinion with the man who's waking up the nation. Total Talk, essential listening. Paul Ross is the breakfast boss. Let's bake and roll. Massive morning radio that's worth going to work for. The Paul Ross Full Set Breakfast. Good morning, madam. Tomorrow morning from Six. On Talk Radio. Radio, we'll get you talking. From the front page to the front bench and the front line. Mid mornings with Julia Hartley Brewer. On Talk Radio, we'll get you talking. This is Talk Radio. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. The time's coming up to uh, ten forty-eight. I'm in the studio with George Galloway, the respect candidate for London Mayor. Um, George, you once said in an interview in 2013, "I like elections more than I like serving." And certainly, when you have been an MP, you very rarely uh, turned up to votes in the House of Commons. Have one of the poorest records on that front. Um, is it the case that if you are elected London Mayor, that you'll uh, have preferred the election campaign more than the serving? Because it's quite a big job running one of the world's greatest cities in the world, isn't it? Well, like- you up to it. Like so much, uh, that's an entire misquotation. I didn't. You say, did not say I that. I did not say that. Uh, I said it was an interview with Total Politics. Yeah. They, they tend not I know, to. I, know I don't the, think uh, they're renowned for I, being I, I, uh, an anti-Galloway uh, organisation, are I, they? I have the tape, Julia. The uh, quotation is that Parliament itself is 98% yes, tedium and 2% terrifying yes. excitement. Just they quoted like, that as well, and uh, you said, I like, like, uh, I like elections more than I no, like serving. Uh, no, I didn't. 
I have the tape, Julia. Now, so do you think uh, they think if have I, uh, well? we both have the tape, and I uh, would have like to, uh, I'd that? like to publish. You sue it. lots of people, so uh, have you not? Sued I do, them and them? I'm very successful. If people lie about you, then I think it's right to use the law that was created for exactly that uh, purpose. But the uh, fact is that I am running for mayor. I have the program to be a successful mayor. I think I have the. Uh, personality and presence to be an effective mayor. Do you think that's and what I'm, it's all about? I'm putting that to, to people. Do you think oh, that think, that's, it's actually yeah, just I about po- po- it's about what say. you say rather than what you do? Because an awful no, no, lot of no. Londoners would perhaps be interested in a mayor who was going to get things done rather than make big speeches. But the first point I made was that I have the programme to be an effective mayor. But I do well, think... Well, you said you were going to talk to the city and you said you were going to talk yeah. to the Met chief and then you were going to try and bring yeah. out the... I, mean, I have I'm, to say, there's a lot of talking involved, isn't there? Well, of course. We've it. had two mayors, uh, Ken Livingstone and Boris Johnson. Both of them were very big figures and they set the tone in the uh, city and I think that that's necessary. And I don't know what the tone, other than a robotic Dalek incantation that uh, that the so-called front two would set. Ours would be very clear, peace, justice and equality. And everything that we said and everything that we did that we legally were able to do would be uh, in that direction. For example, uh, the uh, transport policy of letting all of our children travel free, school children, college and university students traveling free, people say that it will not be possible. But I will try to do it. That will be the direction of travel, if you'll forgive the pun. Children already travel free. No, they don't. Which our students uh, don't travel free. Stud- and no, our, children our, our do. Children I'm not quite are, sure are, why people who are hard-working in minimum wage jobs would want students to be able to travel for free when they can't. Well, the school children had the uh, education maintenance allowance stolen from them by the last government. And the students are paying £9,000 a year in tuition fees imposed by the Labour government and then tripled by the last government. And I think that we need to put something back into the pockets and into the incentivizing of our young people to stay on and study. You talk about why you think you'd be a good mayor, but you do have a history of of perhaps... Well, let's put it this way. You get into an awful lot of spats and fights with people. You you sue a lot of people. You fell out with the Labour Party. You then fell out with half of the Respect Party. It was a split. You you threaten legal action on a regular basis. Yes, I accept you do often win. Um, But is there an issue where if you're a mayor of an international great city like London, it's about working together. It's working together with with, with you know, housing charities, working together with the city. It's about compromise, working with the government. Are you actually, as, as a personality, able to work with anyone? Yes, indeed I am. You, uh, you don't seem uh, to have indeed. a very good track record of doing uh, uh, that, well, though, do you? You say that, but then you would say that. Would uh, I? Wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Well, now, because based on based on the facts, I mean, you don't, I mean, for instance, you know, you, you fell out with the Labour Party. And had, I didn't expelled fall from, out with you the Labour Party. You got expelled from the Labour Party. I, I think that's exp- a fair well, summary. I was expelled you, you by stood, Tony Blair over yes, the Iraq war. Yes. I was right. Everybody listening to this knows that I was right. I'm surprised you've chosen that one. No, no, no. Uh, I'm just no, no, I'm just going to go through this. No, no. But Bethnal Green and Bow, you stood for successfully 2005, and you said you wouldn't run again in that seat in and the I East didn't. End of London. I kept no, my exactly. Promise. But you, you ran for election in the neighbouring seat of Poplar and Limehouse mm-hmm. in 2010, and despite claiming you say being a great constituency MP, uh, you were not elected. Then you failed. You then stood Bradford West by election 2012, uh, and and then uh, you, you, you. Are you, you doing all the talking here, uh, Julia? Well, you've done plenty. I think you find if you listen back, you've done plenty of talking. But you were defeated in. 2015 and now you're running for mayor of london you've said publicly if you don't get this job uh, you're going to go for sadiq khan's seat in tooting if he is elected as he is the front runner uh, for, for mayor um it just seems to me that uh, you, you don't have a stronger track record as you seem to claim judging by the facts well the facts are i've been elected six times to parliament in two countries in four constituencies and i served in parliament for almost 30 years that's not something everybody has done uh, or everyone can do. So I have a track record in politics. And why did the people of Bradford reject years. you? And why did well, the people of Poplar reject uh, uh, you next door to well, your Bethnal Green constituency well, then? Uh, if you're such a good... There's enemy. no shame in losing an election, no, losing a fight. The only shame is not actually fighting, running away. The only shame is uh, crawling on your hands and knees to those with whom you fundamentally disagree in order to curry favor with them. I don't do that. I say what I mean, 
I mean what I say. I'm straight talking. I'm straightforward. If people vote for it, it's good. If they don't vote for it, it won't change what I have to say. I say what I believe. And I think most people listening to this know it, whether they agree with my beliefs or not. OK. Uh, but you say you say what you mean, you mean what you say. So would you aim to make London an Israeli free city, as you claimed for Bradford in 2014? No, uh, because the power over uh, foreign affairs is not one currently residing in the mayoralty. But let me tell you this. As the mayor of London, I will stand up for the Palestinian people and I will oppose the crimes of Israel against them. That's different from the two frontrunners who are in a Dutch auction to abase themselves before the apartheid state of Israel. So there's a big difference there. Now, that will lose me some votes, but I can say and do no other. That's what I But believe why did in. you think you had the power as an MP for Bradford I to didn't. have an Israeli free city? I then? didn't. You, again, again, is this see, something that's people been, have, you're is this something that people have made up? You're distorting There's a lot it. of things no, people make up about you. Aren't that's they? why I've won millions of pounds. Did you hear that figure? Millions of pounds yes, I'm fully in aware damages. Of that. Yes. Because they yes, just make it up. Look, no MP can ban anyone from anywhere. But you'd like to. So it I, you'd like to. I want you'd a, like to ban Israeli academics from, want, from London, is that I right? I want a total boycott you'd like to ban Israeli of apartheid. Groups. And I did, by the way, during the South African apartheid experience. I even went underground in South Africa to try and undermine mm. apartheid there, and I'm very proud about it. And by the end, almost everyone was boycotting apartheid South Africa. And as long as God gives me breath, I'll try to get almost everyone uh, boycotting apartheid Israel. Um, you you say you, you, you'd be a good mayor and an advocate for this city. Um, I wonder, we had a Twitter exchange yesterday, uh, during which time you, you tweeted me, I despise you and always have, said I had a posh voice but no class, and referred to me in a tweet to someone else saying, this kind of malice runs through her veins and drips out. Um, do you think this is a sort of language that's becoming of someone who wants to be mayor of one of the greatest cities in the in the world? Well, of course, the exchange began with you tweeting a fake tweet about me. You did that as a provocation. You did it to dredge the pond, to get the <laughs> the people of the depths out on your side in this interview. I don't need people to you be on my side. You shouldn't have done it. Sure, you know just that to you explain to those people have who have it. lives and aren't on Twitter on Sunday evenings, uh, like George and myself, um, I, I, I tweeted out that I was, uh, uh, George was on my show, and George retweeted that, and I looked at my phone again, and I, there was a tweet that had purported, it was a very good, a very good spoof account, it looks just like yours when you just look at the tweet, uh, saying things you would not discuss. And I retweeted it, pointing out, well, I'll, I'll decide who what the questions are. Someone, as soon as I saw someone pointed out, oh no, that's a spoof account, I I deleted it and I sent out an apology. Apologies. That tweet was, was from a spoof account. Have deleted it. I then spent the evening being berated by you and abused by you, um, demanding that I demanding that I apologise for something. And I tweeted the apology back to you to say I have apologised. Um, but do you not think that the people of London, particularly those who are getting up... Is this at, say, not all a bit self-referential, No, no but, oh, but that's Julia. exactly what I want to get to. Do you not think that the people who are getting up at four or five in the morning to go and do cleaning jobs and doing a slog across the city on, on you know, slow-running buses and living in substandard council housing would rather have a mayor who spent their time worrying about those issues rather than... Someone who accidentally sent a tweet out. You spent, you spent, you sent innumerable number of tweets about this. Are you, is there a worry, do you think, a legitimate, legitimate concern that you may just be an egomaniac? It's not uh, innumerable, it's precisely six. And you didn't apologise to me, the person that you... Even though I wrote apologies and it had at George you, Galloway you in it, that's not an apology. to me, okay? and you ought to have. I'm surprised that in the limited time available to us you want to bog us down but let me tell you candidly i don't believe that you made a mistake you think i, I deliberately it's del a conspiracy del deliberately well you're a journalist i deliberately as a journalist are, sent out a spoofy okay let's Twitter. talk about you as a journalist okay let's do you that. say it was a very good you said it was a very good spoof a lot you had a lot of people fact, tweeting you pointing instead that out. of two l's in the middle of my name it had two eyes now if you're no, journalistic no, it, standard no, it, no, it, yes it did i know uh, it well uh, just in case anyone's wondering I know it an, well. a capital i and an l look remarkably similar when someone's well, got the same not picture. to a journalist one would have hoped uh, a journalist who's sitting in a 
car, looking at her but iPhone and removing cards. You would have Sends thought that a journalist yes, might have spotted you... that this was a malicious fake account. And who then now, immediately, when she did, sent out an apology. Julia. Do you not? You know, do you, do you, you know the you old spend, saying, but careless George, talk. George, cost, but this is Julia. the point. You spend your time obsessing about things like this. Well, uh, can I tell you why? And that is something can I that I think a lot of ordinary people who want someone to represent them in a city where, as you say, it's run for the 1% and the metropolitan elite, people like yourself earning way into six figure sums, um, and, 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 you know, enjoying life, that perhaps you should have better things to worry about. Well, let me tell you why. Careless talk costs lives. I have been multiply physically attacked. You have. And that's by, outrageous. By yes. people, by people who are whipped up by the kind of falsehood that you tweeted last night. Now, right. I could show you my scars, but I won't. I have to point but out, I he's still, not wearing his hat. I'm not wearing my so, hat, yes. but I usually wear my hat because my head is scarred. My ribs were broken. My back Ooh, was and, injured. And it's absolutely appalling uh, that you were still, physically attacked. I'm still limping. And the people who carry out these attacks are whipped up by the kind of mm -hmm. fake propaganda that you retweeted. It's quite serious, actually, Julia. I, I didn't say it was anything but serious. I think I'm absolutely appalled by the fact that anyone in a democracy running for office should ever be physically attacked. I was in office. What I was I'm, an MP. Well, well, exactly. But the point is that... The point is, I, what I, I'm concerned about is that you... Look, Can we move on, Julia? Well, I've got so much else to say. We do have lots to talk about. OK, well, let's, let's move on then. Yeah. Um, would you agree to appear on a reality TV show while you're Mayor of London, as you did with Celebrity Big Brother while you were supposed to be an MP for Bethel Green and Bow in 2006? No, I did that because it was the Christmas holidays and the uh, very substantial sum of money I raised for the refugees in Gaza when no one else cared about them. But I had done it, I won't do it again, and I certainly wouldn't do it if I was mayor. And you certainly wouldn't wear a red leotard again. Has that dogged you? Uh, no. Uh, it's an obsession. You're not, you're, not, you're not embarrassed by it? Uh, of course, uh, people are embarrassed by all kinds of things in their are life. Are you embarrassed I, by it? I did it, I did it for charity. People are you embarrassed to, by it? People, yes, people tend to. Uh, do embarrassing things for charity, and that's all I did. Okay. Um, your company, Miranda Media, went into administration over what the uh, HMRC claims is a £100,000 unpaid tax bill. I know you have disputed that. Yeah. Um, how can you claim to be able to run a city, a multi-billion pound city, if you can't run a small company? Well, make up your mind. Um, a few minutes ago, you were saying I was one of the 1%. Oh, you earn a lot of money. No, no, I'm not disputing gold. whether you so earn a lot I, of money. One, That's on, not the same as running I, a company, am I, is it? Am I, am I, am I successful same? or am I not You're very successful. rich and very successful. That doesn't okay. mean you run yeah. a company so well, does it? So there's a disputed tax bill for yes. a liquidated company. It's being negotiated now. It's not proper to discuss it on the air. OK, but uh, the fact that you've had to go in, that company went into administration, yes? It did, because the main customer of the company mm. was subject to sanctions and uh, couldn't uh, pay the money, couldn't bring money here. OK, and a lot of your earnings, uh, say, you, in terms of de declaration in 2014, from TV work alone, you say you've earned far more than this. You earned £239,000 plus £70,000 in expenses. At what tax rate do you pay? Because you've said you want to close all tax loopholes. Mm. What tax rate do you pay on that income? Uh, top. You pay top rate. Yep. You you don't. That's not a private. That's not a personal service company on which you pay twenty one percent corporation uh, no, tax. No, of course. The, 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 the amount tax. that the company earns isn't all for me. We have employees mm. and we have costs. You do. Um, and in terms of your the people who do uh, employ you, uh, Press TV, owned by the Iranian government, uh, RT, a uh, Russian government owned uh, show. Uh, there's also some question marks over uh, Al Mayadeen, we worked for in 2012, which there were claims, I'm not in a position to prove or disprove these, that the, they had links to the Syrian government. Um, do, you, do you ever worry that your associations with totalitarian governments actually undermines your claim to, to be for the people? Well, I work for all kinds of people, and mm. it's unfortunate that you should put the question in that way because you know that I am precluded from adumbrating all the people who employ me. So it's an unfortunate. No, 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 cheap, but you uh, choose to work point. for you choose I to work, work for, for all two, kinds of people. Two broadcasting no, no, organizations. No, 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 I work for, for all kinds of people, but unfortunately, uh, for legal reasons, I'm not allowed it's to. Nothing to do it, with legal reasons, well, it is. George. Why do you work for Press TV? Why I, do you, why I, do you I, work I, for? I work for RT. I work for anyone who anyone. will give me. Will you please let me finish? I'll work for anyone who will give me a show that they don't interfere in. No one tells me what to say. 
or what I can't say, that's the basis on which I do the shows. Now, I work for lots of people, some of whom are not uh, foreign-owned uh, broadcasters, but I'm not able to fully explain that, as you well know. Yeah, uh, but you choose to work for an organisation that is owned by the Russian government um, where and, and, and an organisation owned by the Iranian government. Are you aware of how gay people are treated in Iran and in Russia? And does it bother you, given that you're about to, you hope to be mayor for a city where an awful lot of gay people live and, and work? And how are gay people treated in Russia? Remind me. Uh, I think I think you know perfectly well. No, no, no. Please very, tell me what you People mean. can be imprisoned uh, Please simply tell me for homosexual what you mean. acts. In, in and Russia. They can even, yes. In Russia. Mm. Do that you, doesn't bother you. Do you know anything Obviously about not. which you talk? No, apparently not. That's completely untrue. But you're quite happy. I like Russia, mm -hmm. and I like the foreign policy of the Russian government. I am against many of their domestic policies, economic and social, including their policy on the so-called promotion of homosexuality, which is the based on, actually, the British government, Margaret Thatcher's policy of Clause 28 or 31, depending on where you lived in the country, which I was one of the leading opponents of. I was commended by Stonewall for my support for gay rights long before mm -hmm. they became Oh, no, gay rights in Britain, in, uh, you've got, yes, exemplary record um, uh, on, no uh, question. Uh, uh, absolutely. So, uh, but you're quite happy if foreign governments treat, uh, don't treat I'm gay not, people the same way. I'm not, I'm not. But you're happy to take uh, their money? I'm happy to broadcast my show okay. on any platform that will not interfere in what I say. Okay, George Galloway thank you very much for joining us we are over time George Galloway is the respect candidate for London Mayor on the 5th of May he's the final one of the candidates the leading candidates we've been talking